Hello, good evening. Of course, we're gonna wait a few minutes just to check into this and uh, wait for the people to come to the class.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. Today, we're finishing our first week of class. So that is very, very good. And uh, of course, we're going to start with the platform. So this is the class of today. And as usual, there below is you're going to find the question for today. And we're going to check the attendance, of course. Okay, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present. Good. Ana Claudia González. Good evening. Present. Perfect, thank you. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present, teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Present. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, Jose Wilfredo, I'm gonna take your assistance here. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today. So let me just check here. Okay, the first thing that we will do today is to check a video. And then we're going to provide opinions or comments about this one. So here we go. Do you need to train employees for a new skill or to perform a new task? I'll explain the seven steps for highly effective employee training in this video. Hello, I'm Steven Goldberg of Optimist Performance, bringing you practical tips and ideas on leadership, team development, and employee performance management in the workplace. Training employees is an essential skill required of both leaders, managers, and also other employees, because it's not always a manager that does the training. Sometimes, especially for new employees, you're gonna have another employee train them on specific tasks. But if the manager or employee doesn't know the steps to proper training, then you may end up with a result that's below what you expect in terms of performance. In our leadership and team development training programs, we do an exercise to teach people the steps for training. And we teach them how to tie a fire underwriter's knot using a wire. And the first thing we do is we hand out instructions. Nobody can do it, or few people just reading the instructions because it's hard to follow the steps without a diagram. We then hand out a diagram on how to do it. And still most people cannot do it just following the diagram. Then we demonstrate how to do it and we have each people perform it and then we correct them 
until everybody's able to do it. Now that doesn't mean that we're sure they've acquired the skill. So here are the seven steps. The first one is to explain the importance of the task and how it relates to the overall job. Because if you're tying this knot, this fire underwriter's knot, incorrectly, it could have a huge impact on somebody's life. First of all, it could cause a fire. And second of all, if it does, and the insurance determines that the proper knot has not been tied, they won't cover the damage. So it's really a, a huge importance to learn how to do this properly. The second is to explain the procedure or the process. The third is to demonstrate how to do it. The fourth step is to observe the employee doing the task. The fifth step is to give feedback, build their confidence, correct them if required, and continue to provide the coaching. The sixth step is to express confidence in the ability of the person to succeed. Just because they've demonstrated that they can do it there, they may doubt themselves in terms of doing it on the job. So you wanna build their confidence through giving that expression of your confidence in their ability. The last step is to follow up on a regular basis depending on the task and the complexity. It could be daily, it could be weekly, depending on the specific need of the person and the procedure. So these seven steps are essentially really simple. They're not complex. Anybody could apply this. And if they follow these steps, then you're sure to have an employee that's gonna be properly trained. This will contribute to better organizational and team success. This process also applies to delegation because every delegation requires some form of coaching as well. So in your next delegation or coaching, follow these seven steps and you'll see how effective it will be to train a new or existing employee. I hope you find this content beneficial for you. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Check out some of the other videos on the channel. There's one recommended for you. Okay, very well. So what did you get from this video? This is a format they implement on how to train people and they have seven steps to do it on their way. And one of the things it brings my attention is that uh, they say, even though they show and they provide a diagram, how to do the step-by-step. Step. Mm, most of the trainee, they do not understand the process. So for that reason, they need to jump to demonstrate the, the procedure. Okay, very well, perfect. Thank you for your opinion. Any other? What did you get from this? Okay, I, <clears throat> I take, I took some notes uh, about all the video, specifically uh, talking about the seven steps or seven points to to uh, to specific training, and uh, the three and four I didn't take, took took notes, but uh, the for me the most important are uh, first. First of all, explain the task, and after 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 this, explain the procedure. Okay. Uh, obvious, obviously, you uh, you are uh, expecting that people uh, follow the the guidance or the manuals, and <clears throat> after practicing uh, sometimes or sometimes, um, you are. Uh, sure about uh, people uh, can do the task uh, in the in the right steps okay or in the right uh, um, instructions 
uh, after after uh, some time, uh, people has uh, or or people are having the training. Uh, obviously, you expect that people follow the rules and complete the task. Uh, give the give the feedback. Uh, even this feedback is right or or not right. Okay, in order to to correct or, um, the mistakes people people do. And after this, uh, you as a uh, as a trainer, you have to uh, be confident in the person uh, and uh, set uh, some rules or some situations where you are giving your all confidence to to this trainee uh, that they are doing good and they are prepared to do uh, the things good, okay? Uh, in my case, that was, that, that, that point were, were that I took notice and took not notes, uh, sorry. And I think this, this is my opinion. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. That was very complete, nice. Anybody else wants to provide any opinion or comment about the video? Um, well, teacher, I think that um, uh, all this the, all this thing about training is a whole process. It's not just like we were talking about uh, the, the last sessions, like just uh, we have to, to not just looking for the needs is, oh, okay, the uh, this is the needs of the company, but uh, what is the plan? And it just in and it, it's not just uh, choose a method, also which method and in that uh, in that method all this process. And for me, uh, uh, one of the first of all the most important thing is is draw the like the main path or, or the main idea, uh, what we are looking with this training. And, and just with that, uh, just do all, all the, the rest of the, of the process. Perfect. Very well. Actually, that is very true. This is a very complex thing. It's not easy because it depends on many, many things, right? For example, what you want to achieve, what kind of company do you have, how much money you will invest, and many other things, what kind of people you have, how many people is going to attend the training, a lot of things. So it's not easy at all. Thank you, Giselle. Any other comment or opinion? Uh, I want to share my opinion. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think that this is an important point, the, the, the how, how we can train other co-workers because um, like the person said in the video, um, sometimes we need to train or we need to do cross training. For example, we need to train from another department. And, and sometimes the, the enterprises or the companies um, are uh, proving the, the employee to Verify if he if he is a good trainer. Uh, at the end, it could mean it could be or it could uh, transfer to a promotion if he uh, do it does it does it well. So it's important to take this seriously because sometimes um, we when when a, when our boss told us that we have to train coworker we don't take it seriously because we are, for example, in the same level training the other workers. But sometimes it could be a proof and at the end it could mean a promotion. Very good. Actually, you're very right. Sometimes that happens when, whenever we're doing uh, crossing departments with training. So uh, this is a very nice opportunity for you as an employee check what is going on in that other department and also for the 
management to check if you are a good fit for that one in case there is a promotion available. So very good, perfect, thank you. Any other comments? Anya? Okay, also please remember that we need to finish the unit one, okay? So this is the homework, the last one for this unit, only five, five things. And we're going to continue with the book because of course we need to move on. So continuing professional development, of course, how to use commas in a series. Look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercises below, it says. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Danny, could you please read this chart? <clears throat> yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, how to use commas in a series. Look at the examples in the box, then complete the exercise below. Whenever there are three or more items in a series, each item, wait. Uh, I have to hide the of course. Um, each item requires punctuation. Pun punctuation. <laughs> that word is complicated. Um, okay. To separate it from the others, the items in a series can consist of any words, phrases, or clauses. The comma before the last element is the series in the series is optional. Um, occasionally, below. Uh, no, okay. the, below, please, okay. Okay, in, ah, uh, hey, in order to keep growing professionally, year after year is necessary to maintain, maintain, improve, and broaden your set of skills. Continuous professional development can be done in different in different way, such as self-directed learning, mentoring, and reading a wide variety of topics. And occasionally separate separating the items in a sentence with commas only, omitting and or or another coordinating conjunction before the last item can help to add emphasis uh, on what is being said. Um, a, we encourage our employees to think about what they want to do, find out what skill they need, pinpoint their ambitions. A, B, a continuous professional development approach will help you analyze your performance, be more effective, increase overall adaptability to changes. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Verna. So it's very clear as Danny explained here already, it's kind of, it's kind of easy. I mean, the series in a comma, I believe that, I believe that you have checked that before, right? So this is not new. You know that whenever you have a series of words, you can, but well, you should use the commas to separate them. That is exactly the same as in Spanish. And before the last element in the series is optional. So you can use it or not, but only before the last element in the series. And on the other way, on the other hand, you have the other one that is in, instead of using and or, or for, for you to connect to ideas, you can use the commas just to emphasize that everything is very important in that one. So that is kind of uh, basic, let's say, but uh, I mean, sometimes these topics are here in the advanced level because we are getting ready to write, to write essays, for example, or to write about topics. Here in the classes uh, that we provide from Insofor, we do not deliver, let's say, uh, any homeworks related to this one, but it should be like that. So these kind of things are for you to include them whenever you are writing a paragraph about topics that are like very professional. So it's very important for you to remember that whenever you are writing something, okay? So um, I believe that is kind of easy, but let's check some vocabulary. Um, uh, broaden, what is a broaden?
kind it's, of it's extend like... or, or amplify something. Sorry. Okay. Very good. That is it. I mean, broaden is like to amplify, to open to more things, to get more things, right? To, to get wide, wider options. Very good. Uh, then it says self-directed learning. What is that? It's like an, an autodidactic uh, way to learn. Very good. So it's when you set up your uh, the skills that you want to upgrade and then you decide by yourself to go and research. Actually, that is a very good thing. Of course, that is something that you are going to do because you are interested in something and not necessarily related with work. So, and let's see, there is no other here. Let's see if I can find any other. Pinpoint, what is to pinpoint? I'm not sure, but I, I have an idea. Maybe it's when you move to a different point and another point, so you are moving. So that's why it's pinpoint. Okay, mm -hmm. very well. Uh -huh. Will be, for example, in a meeting, <laughs> when we want to pin someone just to stay there, it will be like pin the ambition, point that and, and, and pin it. And it's like established, no? It's very similar to establish. It's like to set up a goal. So when you have a goal and you identify what you want to do, so then, then you can decide what to do in order for you to achieve that goal. Good, let's see any other. I don't think there is any other. Of course, we're going to practice, my friends. So this is the exercise number nine. Identify and correct the punctuation mistakes in the following sentences. Compare with your answers with a partner, okay? So um, where I'm gonna give you a few minutes for you to check into that one. I am not going to do break rooms because I want you to see the manual there on the computer in, in case you don't have that printed out, okay? So, but you can, I mean, if you have questions, you can ask me or any classmates so, for opinions on what to do. So let's work on that one. If you have that printed out, it's going to be easier because you can just correct them. But if you don't, you can just write it so you can practice also the writing.
Okay, have you finished already? Do we start and analyze? Or do you need more time? Okay, so let's check them. Let's see. Number one, who wants to share? How is it going to be number one? Mm. I will. Yep. Okay. So Giselle is going to do, do number two in that case. So could you please continue? Okay. Jose Wilfredo. Number one, I think. Uh, I will continue. Uh, yeah, please, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Uh, will, we would like to make certain that members are making a, a meaningful contribution to the development of their core work, competencies, comma, knowledge, comma, process, and procedures skills. Okay, everybody agrees? Okay. Very well. So competencies okay. knowledge, comma, processes. Actually, there you can delete N and then comma as well, but uh, both ways correct that, the last one. So uh, let's check some vocabulary, uh, vocabulary on this one. So meaningful, what is something that is meaningful? A truly? Make a truly contribution. Okay, very good. Something that is, is really important, right? Something Pretty that important. is important. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's like, that's why it says their core work competence. So very good. Nice. Okay, now Giselle, she wants to do the number two. Okay. A crucial aspect of a person's role in their own professional development is to be up to date and aware of the current trends, topic the current trends, uh, topics le legislation, sorry. No, I'm wrong with, with the number two. You have I time wrote... to analyze, don't worry. Mm -hmm. The current trends, Mm. I think past teacher. I'm going okay. to analyze. Okay, perfect. Don't Again, worry. I think in the second, in that one, mm -hmm. it's not necessary to have commas because we are using the conjunction. They, they are already in the right places. Okay. No? Because legislation. No, you, you can delete. You, you can, can delete, delete both, both commas. commas. Uh -huh. Because after N, also you don't need the comma. Yeah. Okay, very good. Actually, you can delete also end, right? And uh, in, uh -huh. in that case, you will use a comma. Exactly. So, so both ways but way correct. Exactly. Very good. Perfect. Nice. That is it. So you can either delete a comma or the word end and the other comma, of course. Good. Number three. Who wants to share number three? Anybody? Yeah. Is the third one okay? Just like the way that it's it's wrote. Okay, everybody agrees that there is no correction into that one. That's right. Yeah, that that yes. uh, I was thinking that <laughs> I don't find I don't found any mistakes or or place to to put a comma. <laughs> okay. Let me check. It says professional who help people continue their professional development and committed to providing ample learning. Ample learning. 
I guess the only thing that I can think of is to delete learning and that comma, learning opportunities, maybe together. So that is the only thing that I might think of. So ample learning opportunities, comma, tools and resources, or tools, comma, resources. But it's better with the end, actually, this one. So it's yeah. going to be only that comma between learning and opportunities. So it makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Good, perfect. Number four, anybody? I think um, after professional qualifica qualifications, comma, I think <laughs> conference online, comma, learning and writing, I don't know. Okay. So yeah, include professional qualifications, comma, probably conferences, comma, online learning and writing, reading. Okay, online learning is together. Yeah, sometimes it's possible to place a comma before and, sometimes, okay? And uh, writing, reading, technical articles. So you can delete that and also and set another comma there. That might be possible as well. Number five. Uh, and management leadership should be a comma. Very good, definitely. So any industry, column, right? And then management, comma, leadership, and strategy development. Good, perfect. Number six. Well, I think I that think. we need to delete the comma after the end and just um, read online, comma, learning, reading, comma, articles and reports, conference, um, report, sorry, comma, conference, comma, workshop, seminaries and classrooms. For me, just delete articles and after that, comma. Okay, yeah, at that part is the, the word, right? Everybody agrees on that one? So articles, comma, reports, comma, it should be like that one. Everybody agrees? Yes. Good, perfect. So remember that it makes, it has to make sense, right? On what you're reading. Whenever you are reading something and it doesn't make sense, well, of course, something is not going well. Okay, it says to continue in professional development. And uh, this one says take turns role playing a conversation where an employee presents a money or supervisor structure request to access a training program. Mm, okay, this is kind of interesting. It's not that complicated, but we can practice. So this is like this. One person is going to try to request like uh, a training and then the other person is going to say yes let's do it or not but i mean uh, it's kind of difficult because we all have different departments and we have different companies and things like that one and it says three benefits so that is the most important part so whenever you express that one uh, you should provide why right it's like whenever you are requesting anything when you request to your boss for example a new computer the first thing that your boss or the it department is going to ask is why why do you need a new computer because mine is not working because it's getting frozen because i need to be more productive because i need to install a software uh, where it needs more resources on the computer. So there are benefits for you to check into that one. Um, I don't think this is a very good exercise, but anyways, we can give it a shot. Uh, there are any two volunteers that can give it a try. It's going to be kind of simple. Request providing benefits about a training, any kind of training.
Actually, we're gonna read about that one in a few minutes, but we can give it a shot by now. Yeah, I don't think it's not very good access. Let me check what would be the best. No, this is not. And this is unit two. Okay, no worries. We're gonna start. Actually, we are going to watch another video. Let me just check. Uh, which one is first one? This one is first one. Okay, so we're going to check this. This is a very small video. And then uh, you just tell me opinions or comments about this one. Here we go, my friends. Why do you think uh, it's important to invest in employee learning and development? Well, I think in times of crisis, whether it be recession, you know, people are next to them on either side are losing their jobs or losing their homes. There's a little bit of security in knowing that your company's investing in you. And so there's a culture, it's a mindset, it's a, a sense of confidence that a CEO can give their employees to help build loyalty. Uh, and it's it's inexpensive compared to the retraining and the rehiring and the losing people uh, side of the business. You know, to be able to invest in somebody a small amount of a few thousand dollars a year and keep them keep them happy. We've seen so many surveys over the years where you know people don't leave because of money. They leave because they're not valued. And one of the reasons that you can help your employees stay feel valued is to invest in them be it training, be it investing in their personal lives, providing daycare, you know, simple things like that. And I think those leaders that see that and that really understand how to commit to the people uh, of the organization, and yeah, it costs money. And there's some, you know, P&L stuff that has to be worked out. But at the same time, even a little bit at least shows I care. And there's a phrase that I've, I've heard over and over again that, you know, being listened to feels so much like being loved, you can hardly tell the difference. And when an employee feels listened to or invested in, they feel much more loyal to the organization because they feel that somebody cares about them. Good, what did you get from this one? In my opinion. <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that sometimes uh, the money is just the most important thing, the most important thing for the employees. Uh, most of the time we think that, or maybe the companies think that uh, people just work for money and yeah, well, everybody. And I think that all, all, all my, my classmates, including me, work absolutely for money. But um, I think that sometimes, uh, uh, that feeling or that or, or in my case I like to feel value in the company that I I that my work is value and that all the things that I do every day um, maybe are important for the company just not just for me it's for the company and invest in the employees to keep them happy and keep them I don't know that that feeling of safety increase the loyalty and the commitment with the company also. Perfect, very good. Actually, everything that you said is important. I mean, the money, I mean, sometimes you need to invest. You don't have to care about money. Of course, you need to measure many things. And also, well, when you feel valuable for, I mean, I mean that I believe is for any kind of relationship, right? If you have friends, if you have anybody, they're next to you. If, if you may feel valuable, that person, I mean, loyalty and uh, the relationship is going to be very good. Any other opinion? I remember many yes. people. Okay. Right. I will uh, share my opinion. Well, uh, the lady said that the employees want to, want to feel loved by the company. Uh, that's why they think that the company is investing of them. And that's why that create a loyalty. They, and also is a benefit for the company because uh, like she said that uh, the company invests more if rehired or retraining uh, other person. So that's why they uh, save money and have a lot of uh, work employees 
for a long time. Very good, perfect. Yeah, actually, that is true. I mean, if you want to, to think in the long term, of course, you need to invest, right? So people are happy within the company and they prefer to stay and not to go other place. And uh, I mean, they share best practices and that makes everything more productive. So I remember there were more people saying something. Yep. Anybody else? I, I, it sounds like a kind of surprising that she, the lady said that in most of the survey, the, the people, they don't leave the companies because of the money. They leave the company because they don't feel valued. Don't feel the low. Mm -hmm. The recognition uh -huh, in, the, in what they do. And it's like surprising because I thought people leaves companies because they uh, get another, a different opportunity and that involves the uh, earning additional money. <laughs> I thought that, but if the study says the opposite, whoops. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, uh, that is very true. I mean, yeah, money is very important. And uh, we know that if you go to other company, of course, you're looking for, for more money. Maybe the thing is that the first thing that motivates you to go to other company is that you don't feel happy, right? If you feel nice, even if you don't have a lot of money, or even if you know that you can get more money in other company, maybe you are not going to start looking for it. Only if you have a big need and the money is not enough, right? But other than that, the first, the first thing that motivates somebody to look actually for another job is that, that you're not happy about different situations, schedule, uh, your boss. Of course, not feeling valuable is one of the most important. And I believe here in El Salvador, that is very common. I mean, if you ask the most of the people, they go to their jobs just because they have to. They feel like obligated, right? They are there at their job saying, oh my goodness, it's Monday, you know, and I don't want to be here. So it's a big problem. It's not, not only from the point of view of the training, but for the whole organization, right? So it's very interesting. Any other opinion or comments about the video? Well, uh, my point of view, according to the topic, uh, I heard that the lady said that uh, when the employees work in a company, you need, when you are thinking in that you are the company, you need to care about your employees. That is important because, it, well, in my opinion, employees leave the company about the bad um, tratos, bad treat. actions about the, the, yeah, treat about the others. Just say the uh, bad um, leader, leaderships or bosses or something like that. So I think that um, that point is totally important because uh, people thinking that uh, money is everything, but in my personal opinion, the treat is the most important thing in your work because you can get a lot of money, but if you don't have a um, good trade, trait, trato, un buen trato? A good treatment. A good treatment in your work, you are not comfortable. So you are looking for another position in another company. So the, tr the treatment is important for me. About yeah. the lady say, right? Yeah, actually that is true. I mean, um, yeah, as I was telling you, that is the first motivated for you to try to, to look for another job, to think first that. So if you, speak with people or you remember the time when you were looking for another job is because something happened and you say, man, I'm not happy here. I need to go somewhere else. 
of course, money is important, but it's not the most important. This is like the same about services or product that you purchase, right? Maybe you can go to a company where the products are very cheap, but if they treat you bad, I mean, the mass of the people, they are going to just go to other company. And the, on the other hand, if you are, uh, if you feel good in your work, maybe you try to improve some uh, development, some processes, but if you if if your boss can't uh, pay can can pay attention mm -hmm. to you, maybe you always are shy in your work, and you maybe will have a a good option to oh, sorry a good idea to improve the some processes, but if you are not feeling a value you don't share that so true i mean when you're happy you look for another position within the company right that is what happens when you say i'm, I'm happy here and if you need more money that's what you do okay i see that position and i know i can do that one i'm going to upgrade my skills and then i'm going to try to get there but that, that, is, that happens only when you're happy within the company, when you feel that that is a very good place for you to stay, make a career, stay for years and years. But whenever you, that the first, if you make, uh, if you make up your mind and you go ahead and check into your remembrance and whenever you try to look for another job is because of that. It's because of situations that happen and you're not happy about that one. Sometimes it's not only about the treatment that somebody gives to you, but sometimes you have ideas and they don't listen to your ideas. You know that there is potential in the company, but nobody listens to you. So that is very important. Another important thing in that point is that when the company uh, looking for another candidate for a better position than you have, and they don't or they didn't take your CV to improve your your place, for example, and maybe you 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 can do it, but they give the better position another external candidate. Yeah, yeah that is pretty sad, right? Because you have the potential and you can do very good yes. things. And uh, you know the company already, I mean. But anyway. Good, any other opinion? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Uh, the consult training, uh, the training in plan include the uh, areas or training, the action where you're at the, the employees feel important uh, with their uh, company or organization. It's important to evaluate their skill and their uh, the opinion for their uh, on the benefit uh, of, of the, the company and will allow the, them to have economic stability, 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 stability yeah. and promotion and promotion the opportunities the or the company or organization yeah i mean uh, everything is important of course and uh, well the companies are very different but i believe that throughout the time they have learned on what is important for employees maybe not all of the companies but i have seen that the country has changed some companies have changed the bigger the company, the better the situation is. Maybe the problem are others like uh, communication, right? So, but they, I mean, they have some, sometimes they have people with special departments for them to, to listen to you, to check what you can do. And of course that depends on you if you are going to approach and try to provide ideas on how to do many things. Any other opinion about the video? Okay, so we're gonna start reading, but before that one, so we don't uh, interrupt that, I'm going to check the attendance because time flies, my friends. 
Okay, uh, Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. 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 My nick was muted. <coughs> okay, don't worry. Thank you, María Alejandra. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibeth Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Present. Good. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Good, perfect. So this is a short reading, the one that we will do right now. And there is another that is also very short. Uh, let me check. Okay. So the importance of training development in the workplace. Uh, the first one is going to be for Yvonne. Could you please help me with the first paragraph? Okay. Training presents a prime opportunity to expand the knowledge base of all employees, but many employees find the development opportunity expensive. Employees also miss out on work time while attending training sessions, which may delay the completion of projects. Despite the potential drawbacks, training and development provides both the company as a whole and the individual employees with benefits that make the cost and time a worldwide investment. Good, what did you get from this one? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I think that uh, all the trainings uh, are important because uh, you can improve your knowledge, your skills, uh, you can know about the tools uh, in your in your workplace that you didn't know. Uh, for example, with new programs uh, to make the your your work um, easier uh, uh, through uh, tools like, for example, Excel or other programs to make graphics or um, uh, and other things. But sometimes uh, you receive the sessions in your, in, 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 the, in, in your time and you, after the training, you have to a lot of work that you have to complain and that is uh, difficult for the employees. So uh, many employees are thinking about the work uh, in, the, in the workplace and not are focused in the, in the training. Yeah, actually, that is very true. That is something that happens, happens a lot. So very good, perfect, thank you. And that was very accurate. So let's check about some words here. Uh, let's see, what is it? I remember something. What is to delay? Not on time? Not on time, that's so true, very good. Completion, what is completion? Uh, yeah, yeah. 
and a job is completely to done. Okay. To finish. To finish. Very good. To achieve the goal that you want. Despite. What is despite? Mm. It's like a noto. Okay. Very good. Nice. And what is drawback? Uh, like an inconvenience. An inconvenience, something that makes you go back instead of going forward, right? And let's see. What is worthwhile? Something okay. valuable. Something valuable, very well. So something that whenever you invest time or money into that one is going to be a worth, right? It's going to, the, the price that you pay or the time that you spend that one, it, it, it makes the effort valuable. So good, perfect. The next one, addressing employee weakness. That is going to be for, let's see, Ramon Enrique, please. Hello, Raymond. Are you there? Not possible. Okay, uh, Heidi, could you please help us with the second one? We're addressing it, please. Weaknesses. Hello, Heidi. Not possible either. Okay, Marcos. Okay. Okay. Addressing employee weakness. Okay, most employees have some weakness in their workplace skills. A training program allows you to train those skills that each employee needs to improve. A development program brings all employees to a higher level, so they all have similar skills and knowledge. This helps reduce any weak links within the company who rely heavily on others to complete basic work tasks. Providing the necessary training creates an overall knowledgeable staff with employees who can take over for one another as need, needed. Work on team or work independently without constant help and supervision, supervision from others. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Um, I understand that um, to get the same level, for example, in, in one department, we need to focus on the lacking of each employee so they can have the similar level and they can improve their, their gaps. I don't know. Um, um yeah they can perform or do any task if for example one employee goes to vacation any other can replace him with any problem okay that very problems. good perfect nice so that is it i mean some uh, everybody is different right and some uh, employees might need more training than any others that are already right there so uh, this uh, is something that as a company, they need to identify the way to improve. There is always room to improve. So it doesn't matter if you are very, very well-skilled, there is always a way for you to get better uh, or get other skills that maybe you don't have on this uh, position that you are. Let's check some words here. Strengthen, what is strengthen? Is to become more strong. Very something. good. Is to get stronger. Or stronger. Very good. Perfect. And what is, well, this is, let me check. Rely. Trust. 
It's very good, something like trust. What is knowledgeable? That everybody knows or everyone involved uh, has the knowledge. Okay, somebody that has knowledge. Very good, perfect. Um, so, I don't know if maybe it's a person who is an expert in some topics or something. It might be something like that as well. Very good, perfect. So the next one, improved employee performance. That is going to be for... Yes, sorry. Uh -huh. In the in the lecture, uh, the the title <clears throat> for this paragraph, addressing employee weaknesses. Addressing in this context is meaning like uh, taking notes or uh, um, being uh, consciously about the employee weaknesses. Something like that, yeah. When you say address a problem it's or a like question, handling. it's like handling, very good. It's to take action, actually. It's when you identify oh, okay. and then take action about something and you okay. provide an answer or a solution. Okay, thank you. Perfect, very good. It's so the same like approach. Um, approach mm. is when you, I mean, when you have, a person that you want to approach, for example, or when you have a problem and you try to analyze that one. Addressing maybe the difference is that you actually provide like an answer or provide a solution for that one, provide mm -hmm. something. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay. Uh, Roberto Luis, improve if you are here, of course. Not possible, okay. Maria Alejandra, could you please help us? Okay, teacher. <clears throat> Improve employee performance. An employee who received the necessary training Receives. is receive the necessary training is better able to perform her job. She has become more aware, aware, of, uh -huh. aware of safety practice and Practices. proper pr Practices and pro and proper procedures 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 for um, procedures for basic tasks. The training may also build the employee's confidence because she has a stronger understanding of the indu industry and the responsibilities of the, her job. This confidence may push her to perform even better and think of new ideas that help her excel. Continuous training also keeps your employee on the cutting edge of cutting industry, edge. Cutting, cutting edge for industry development. Employees who are com competent and on top of changing industry standards, help your company hold a position as a leader and attract competitors with, within the industry. Good, what did you understand on this one? <laughs> and on your own words, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that is that the employee needs to, or what do you need for you the best in your job or your performance in your job is better for the company because you do better their things or you um, feel comfortable in the positions and you do that. Uh, are you more responsibility with your job because you understand uh, how do you need in the positions? And, and I think that is more training, uh, more per, um, per se like these are, yeah, the due presentation for their job is better 
compare that the other person then receive the trainings uh, for the different as aspects in the, the industry that, that the company? Okay. But, <laughs> yeah, actually that is true. I mean, uh, if, if the employees, they have the tools and the knowledge, they are more confident about doing their job. And of course, they are going to improve the performance within the company. So it's a chain. It's a win-win situation, say something before. So definitely, that is very good. Let's check some vocabulary. Let's see. Um, I don't think there are many here. Cutting edge, what is that? It's like um, being on top of news, uh, could be processes or, mm, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Actually, that is it, good. So cutting edge is something that is like the best, right? So for example, when you say, I have the cutting edge technology, is because you have the best technology regarding something, so. Good, there is no other. So the next one is says structure training and development. Jose Osmin, could you please help us with that? Sure. Structure training and development, right? Yeah, please. Okay. An structure training and development program ensures that employees have a consist consistent experience and background knowledge. The consistency is particularly relevant for the company's basic policies and procedures. All employees need to be aware of the expectation and procedures within the company. This included uh, safety, discrimination, and, and administrative task. Uh, putting all employees through regular training in these areas ensures that all the staff members at least have exposure to the information. Okay, mm -hmm. what did you understand on this one? Okay, just let me take a look. Okay, so uh, I mean, so that is, that, that, that all of the employees had to know so that the expectation and be aware about the expectation that, and also the procedures that the company has in order that so that we can like ensure all members so that we have like the accurate information or let's see, I don't know. So I think that is. Okay, perfect. Yeah, actually, uh, well, this is about like, yes, it's important to provide training, but not any training, right? You need to mm -hmm. structure the training, think about that one so you can provide the best experience for the employees so they can learn exactly what you need them to learn. Yeah, but, but it's like based on for the background knowledge, right? So uh, yeah. That... yeah, so I mean, Yes, you know that they need some skills, but they have some experience and they have some skills mm -hmm. already. So you need to identify exactly what what is better for them. Okay, and, and actually background knowledge is almost the same that like, the employee policies? I uh, know. No? The background knowledge is something that they know already. A policy mm. is like a procedure that is written for you to accomplish something, right? So Okay, follow me, right. Uh, yeah. Okay, got it. Good, perfect. Thanks. Let's see if I can find any other. I don't think there are many here on this one. No, I don't think. Okay, the last one it says employee job satisfaction. Francisco, Eduardo, can you please help us with this? Sure, here. Okay, please, uh, the last one, employee job satisfaction. It is true. Employees with access to training and development programs 
have the advantage over employees in other companies who are left to seek a training opportunity on their own. The investment in training that a company makes show the employees they are valued. The training creates a supportive workplace. Employees may gain access to training they will they have otherwise not about of sub or themselves. Employees who feel appreciated and challenged through training opportunity may feel more satisfaction toward the years. Good, perfect. What did you get from this one? Uh, I think it's uh, when the employees uh, have access to a good train, uh, definitely uh, change the, the way uh, of uh, these employees see uh, the work because uh, the part of uh, the government, uh, they feel better because uh, uh, they feel appreciated with the company because uh, they uh, help the company invest in day. Okay, definitely. I mean, when they are satisfying, that is a topic that we have discussed a lot here so that when they're satisfied of course uh, they are going to work better and they are going to stay in their job so let's check if i can find any work. what is to seek to look for search to look, look out. out very good search look for something search. nice what is let me see again uh, profit very good to get some profit so anything like that and there are no other. oh well this is the last one toward so move Okay, to move in a direction. The, the huh? direction, yeah. <laughs> Very well, that is a preposition of movement. In English, we have a lot of prepositions. Good. Okay, we're gonna continue with this other. This is tips for writing a training request. Okay, so actually that is the topic for today. And we need to check how to write a training request. So the first part is going to be for, let's see, Roxana, could you please help us with this first part? Okay. Uh, training is an important step in advancing your career and attaining professional goals. To pursue additional training. Pursue. Sorry? To pursue. To pursue. Pursue. To pursue. To pursue additional training opportunities, you'll likely either have to pay for the training yourself, for the pay for the training yourself, or request that your employer cover the cost. If you choose, I'm sorry, I was, I was working. Are <laughs> you, you okay? Choose, <laughs> yes, All I right. was walking around around my 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 house. Sorry. Okay. If you choose to request additional training through your employee, sorry, if you choose to request additional training through your employer, you can write and training a training request later, later, letter, letter, letter that outlines the benefit of the training for both and for sorry for both you and the company in this article we explain how to write a re request letter 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 yeah that letter that will help you to get training you want okay very well what did you understand on this one well 
the thing is in this article that it's important to uh, take um, training by yourself or uh, give or or training that give your company and it's important uh, you need to consider you need you don't need to consider if you need to pay or not because it is important for you to improve some skills okay very well so and then whenever you want to request some department or uh, your boss about this uh, you you need to do like a formal request right so that's what we're going to do in this one okay so this part is going to be for fernando gonzalez Okay, teacher. What is a request letter for training? A request letter for training is a document you give your employer. Sorry, teacher, employer. Employer. Employer, okay. A request letter for training is a document you give your employer to ask the company to pay for additional training that will help you in your role or to learn new skills. Ongoing, ongoing, ongoing training and education can can help you progress in your career, develop new skills and improve your abilities, making you a more valuable member of the team. Many companies encourage professional development among their employees because they see the value of additional training to close the skill gaps and build stronger teams. Your employer may be willing to pay for training opportunities if they feel you are loyal and hardworking. Research all the options available so you can present a letter that, online, that outlines the best opportunities for the skill you want to build. Good, what did you get from this one? Uh, for this one, that uh, yeah, I have an extra training in another skill that you need for your job, it's will be useful for for your performing in your work and uh, if you are a, a good employee a good employee like loyal or hardworking and uh, maybe the company can be can invest in your career or in your pre preparation for other skills and uh, this this is a good for for both parts because you have new skills, new knowledge, and the company take advantage of this. Very good, perfect. So this is like a, like a sale that you are going to make, right? So you are going to sell to your boss why the benefits of getting a training for you and the company. So. This is like a, a very formal thing that in English is actually something that happens. I mean, I know that in El Salvador it's like, you go to the human resources and ask, is it possible to do this? And they say yes or no, or let, let us think about it. But in English, I mean, you can actually do that one. You can go and make a letter uh, for many things. I mean, not only for training, you can request via letter or email something so they can, check into that. Uh, there are no words here, I guess. Let me check that we can discuss. I know that you know, but it's just for us to discuss. Uh, ongoing, what is that? Something that is happening now is running. Very good, something in process, good. In progress, in process. Good. Uh, what is to encourage? Like a, I'm sorry. The support or or something. Okay. Or, yeah, to support, to motivate, right? To say you can do it, something like that. Okay. The other one is among. What is among? Yeah. 
between? It's like between. Is similar but not like between. Between, remember that is between two things, and I'm only between in the middle. Um. So it's it's different. So between is between two, and among is I mean, for example, something that is very common in English, in English says that ghost lives among the living. So among the living is there hidden in the middle of everybody. So something like that. Let me check if there is any other. What is it? Oh, well, we check that someday. I remember now. Um, I don't. Oh, well, outline. What is to outline? Make a list. description. Okay, very well. To describe, to, to point, we write exactly what you need to. So the first one says how to write a training request letter. Follow these steps to draft an effective training request letter. Draft, what is a draft? Something that maybe is not, uh, is not presented formally, uh, is a document uh, that you are writing maybe, but it's not uh, completed. It's not the final. Yes, it's not the final version. Yes. Very good. So it's not the final version. It's like a, the first one and then you can correct it, right? So you express your ideas and then you read it and you say, mm, I need to change or improve some parts. So that is a draft. Very good. Number one, research is for Anna Claudia. Could you please help us? Sure, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't unmute. Okay. Um, I, research, right? Yeah, please. Start the process by researching what skills you'd like to improve and how those skills will benefit you in your career path or the career you wish to pursue. You can research conferences, online trainings, or other opportunities that relate to your field. Or you can ask your coworkers what type of trainee they have thought so, so, uh -huh. so out in their careers. After you identify the skills you want to develop, discover what training options are available. Good, what did you get from this? Mm, it's important first to identify what type of courses or training we are looking for, because if those are going to improve our skills, uh, let's take advantage. It's, it would be like a 50-50 situation. It's a win-win situation. We win, but the company also win. Very good. So definitely the first thing that you need to do is to research about you your department, your co-workers, what do we need, right? So we can check what would be the right path for, for that one. Good. Let's see, uh, any word here? Pursue, we checked that one before, right, or not? What is pursue? Go after something or... Looking okay, for Very good. When you are... I mean, yeah, looking for something when you are running after a goal, right? Something like that. And uh, what is to research? Investigate. To investigate. Maybe. Very good. Nice. What is field? Is area or... Um... It, it could be for for many because the field or the ground too. Yeah. Or maybe the area of the specialty or. Okay. Yeah, in this case is something like that one, like the specialty or department or anything like that. But you are true, Danny. You know, there are many words that have uh, different meanings. I will take a picture tomorrow and I'm going to send you, for example, I have a dictionary that is from Cambridge that is a nice dictionary. And you will see there, there are two pages of meaning of the word get. Two pages, just for that word. 
So how you can use that one? Yeah. There are many, many ways. It's not the, the same to say get up, to get in, to get out, to get down, right? So sometimes that happen. In English, the words, they have a lot of uses. Let's see, what is south? Something, something search. Just... search or looking for or well, seek. Yeah. It's similar, teacher, similar like the, the word that we see before, seek out. Similar yeah. to seek out. It's similar to that one. Very good. Perfect. Good. Ooh, okay, so let's check the second one. That is going to be for Juan Miguel Brand. Okay, the second one, ask for help. Consider internal colleagues who might be able to help you at, to help you develop a certain skill or supervisors who might recommend you for a training. If you want to learn graphic design, you may be able to find a mentor at your company, such as senior graphic designer or marketing professional. Very good. What did you get from this one? Um, one of, of these methods, like uh, as the title says, is asking for help when you are trying to do uh, this, this kind of things. Um, in my case, uh, asking for help, uh, for example, might be with colleagues, not only uh, inside the company, but also uh, colleagues who work at other companies, but in the same field, okay? Uh, um, if you want to um, perfection To perfection something. To perfection something. Uh, this, this technique, if we can say like that, is, 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 is good because uh, you're not uh, doing things uh, blind. Instead, you have a, a, maybe a mentor, like uh, the lecturer says, uh, a senior, it's uh, a person who is in another level, obviously uh, above you. So this is one of the, of the, of the best uh, recommendations in this, in this kind you know, of things. Very good, perfect. Actually, uh, yeah, you are so right. Ask for help is for everything, right? Of course, you yeah. are there in the company to do a job and it's supposed that you have all the skills, but sometimes you don't know, right? Or sometimes you want to be sure. So the best that you can do is to ask for help or ask the way that it should be something done. Very good. Let's see if there are many or any words here. Um, I don't think so. Well, senior graphic designer, what is a senior position? What is that? It's, it's a people or, or a person who has a, um, the enough experience a, and this experience obviously helps helps uh, or help uh, these people to do better things in shorter times and has an amount of knowledge uh, who, uh, that uh, can share with uh, the pairs or okay. uh, the people who is, who is junior, who is beginning or who is starting uh, the career path in the company. Very good, perfect. That is it, actually, nice. Number three says present the benefits. Uh, Giselle, could you please help us with this? Hello, Giselle. Sorry, I'm here. Okay. Okay, present the benefits, right? Yep, please. When reading a training request letter to your employer, you'll need to clearly outline the benefits of the training, as well 
as how your development of those skills will benefit your team or the company overall. For example, if you've noticed a skills gap of your team, frame the letter in a way that points out the gap and describes how the training will rem remedy, remedy it. Very good. So what did you get from this one? That I remember that I, the Heidi, mentioned in a session before that this uh, this thing of the training i think that, that we were talking about training or motivation but i think that it, it can be related that it's a win 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 relationship if we if we want to to put in that words that we if we are going to write a letter like this we have to present not just the benefits for the for the team or for my own I have to present the benefits for the company. So in that way, I maybe will have the support that I need. Perfect, that is it. I mean, yeah, you are going to present a request and then of course the benefit for you, your department and the whole company. Nice. Let's see uh, some words. Uh, frame, what is to frame? Anybody to put, to put something, to put something, in, uh -huh, to put something inside other thing, uh, who is uh, uh, of of this of their size. Okay, when very you well. Are trying, when you are trying to to, uh, I don't know how to say in English, but come on, emphasize. Okay. Very good to emphasize something. So uh, it's like putting everything together, the things that are important, right? So okay, okay. put everything there inside. Good. Mark to write. Okay, very good. And well, this word exists in English as well, remedy it. And maybe it's not that common, but exists, you can use. It. And it's almost the same than in Spanish. Okay, so number four is going to be for Heidi. Through your commitment to the company, your employer might worry that after the company pays you for training, you'll take new you'll take your new skills and move on to a new position. Address this common concern in your letter by expressing your loyalty and showing how you will use your new skills to benefit the company. Okay, what do you get from this? I have seen it before at the bank, you know, uh, the, the bank has helped so many, so many of our, of our, of our course to, uh, with scholarships and, and trainings and, and then they leave the company. So uh, they can make, they could make you a contract, right? For example, after this after this training, you keep on working with us for five years, for example. Sometimes they do that. Very good. Yeah, actually uh, a classmate say that before uh, that, I mean, whenever you are getting some training, if you leave the company, you need to pay for that one, right? So you just, I mean, right. depending on the, on, the, on the price of the training, the company can do that one, definitely. Okay, so there are no words on this one, I guess. Okay. Yeah, no new words. Perfect. And number five is going to be for Jose Osmin. Okay, which one? Number five, please. Uh, okay. Applying the actions. It's helpful to discuss multiple actions that will help you build the necessary skills if your employer can't cover the cost of a graduate level program they might be able to send 
you to a seminar of conference that will that will give you training in a certain area as an alternative by presenting actions you show your employer that you've spent the time to reach what's available and are willing to compromise what did you get from this one let's see Okay, so it's like a training, so that will be for free. So in order to cover so all of the necessities, so that probably someone is requesting or is needing. And we, okay. we can like provide multiple actions in order to help them. Very good. That is very important. That is like when you present a problem, right? When you go to your boss and you present a problem, you don't just present the problem. You also present one or more solutions for the problem. This is yes. happening, but we can do this or this or this other one. So the same happens on this situation. So whenever you are going to present a need for a training, you can present different options. There is this training that in Miami, you know, that is very expensive and very nice. But if you don't want to spend that money, I mean, there is another one here nearby in Guatemala. So whatever is better for you and the company, I can take advantage of it. The other one is better, but at least I'm going to learn the skill that I have in hitting Guatemala. So options are there. Let's see if we can find anywhere here. Uh, well, this phrase or this sentence is interesting. If your employer can cover the cost of a graduate level program. So cover, what is covered in this sentence? Something that they can pay for. For all the training. Good. So they, they are can not, afford it, right? That is it. They cannot afford very well. And then it says a graduate level program. What is that? Like a, like a college. It's like career. a discourse that we are on a degree? level and you are advanced. Okay, so it's like that one. It's not just a training for a Saturday, right? It's a training that takes maybe six months. Uh, so it's a little bit expensive. And at the end, you are going to receive a diploma and a lot of things, and you are going to know many things. There are trainings like that, but sometimes it's not possible to for the company to pay for that one. So then you can get or you can provide other options, like a seminar that is going to be one time only so it would be possible but it's a good thing also for you to present the, the big one right we don't we never know so maybe they can say yes and there is no other one okay number six uh show the return of investment potential that is for jose wilfredo okay show the return on investment potential uh, when a company allocates funds and time for an employee to develop their skills, the leaders want to know what the outcome will be. You likely need to report back on the what you learned and how it will benefit your career progression. As well as how you can apply your skills in your role. If your training program is ongoing such as a higher education program, you may need to check in regularly to provide progress reports and outline instance when you been able to use your skills. Good, what did you get from this one? Uh, this is, May this is well. This is when the company uh, want to know when you will when when you will. Uh, how can I explain this? When you will back the the investment 
that they that they make on you. Maybe okay. um, maybe we could we could explain like when you you maybe your company need a person in that area and you were training on that area. So the the company doesn't want to reinvest. If not that you will uh, you will be able to do that work. So that's why it says that show the return on investment potential. So the company wanna know when you will back the, the investment that they make on you. Very good, perfect. Yes, remember that investment is something that it is going to be a benefit for the company in monitor, I mean, in money. And there are many ratios that you can use for you to measure that one. And one is the ROI, that is the return of investment, right? So, and I mean, yeah, yeah. that is like a, like a simple calculation that you can do yourself. So you can say in six months and three months, you are going to see the difference in the production, right? So. Let me just check here. Our outcome, what is outcome? The results. Okay, very good. The results of a process or anything like that. Uh, it says you'll likely, what is likely? Something probable. Very good, perfect. This is your career progression. What is that career progression? Maybe uh, the way that you are uh, following to complete your career, but Materia, signature by signature. Okay, very good. Yeah, so there are like steps uh, in the, in a path, in the career path, right? Something like that. Let's see if there is any other, I don't think so. Okay, outline instances. What is instances? Anybody? Situations? Situations, very good. So, so different situations, different uh, levels of uh, processes where you will be able to show that you have the skills. So it says tips for writing a request for training letter. Choose a professional format. So that is going to be for Ada Cáceres. Use professional format. Yes, please. Compose your letter in a typical business style using a standard AC, AC2, AC2 read from a one, one inch margins. If you send the letter of paper or as an email attachment, use a professional heading that includes your contact information the day and your employees contact information. If sending email, use the clear subject and line, begin the letter with a professional greet, greeting, such as their ex and include a polite closing, such as sincerely before your signatory. Okay, very good. I believe this is very clear, right? Use a professional format. So you know that in business, in your job, whenever you are going to send an email, it has to be like a format okay? whenever you check into that one. And for example, uh, easy to read, uh, the font, one inch margin, things like that that are very, very important. The other one says praise your supervisor in the letter. So that is going to be for Yvonne. 
praise your supervising in the letter. Consider complimenting their leadership style through encouraging and appreciate words about their role as a mentor to you. You could write, I admire your style of leadership and want to develop similar skills or since you have been a role model for me in my position, I'd like to request your feedback or pursuing an opportunity to develop additional skills. What did you get from this? Um, I think that you have to uh, say um, uh, some words to encourage people uh, to take the, the trainings or for example, um, words to mention the advance or the improving areas uh, that you that you see uh, in 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 every employee uh, to they encourage the the learning in in every in every topic. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, to be honest with you, me personally, it's just my opinion. I beg to differ to this one. Maybe for me, it's not a good idea to say, oh, I admire you. Maybe it's better to praise the company. So the values of the company are these, and these are very important, and I'm very happy to be part of the company, and I would like to help in a different way. I need more skills. Maybe that one, for me, my personal opinion, is better than to praise just the supervisor or your boss, which is not going to be that good. Okay, the next one says, highlight your efforts. Mm, this is a good one. Marcus, could you please read us? Okay. As you write about what you what you done in your career, include details about how your effort has benefited the team or company by show, showing your will, willingness to work hard and contribute you may increase the chance of having your training request approved. You could mention how you've been, how you put in extra hours to broaden the impact of the marketing team or your time spent implementing a new system that improves the way the company manages customer support requests. Tie this effort back to your request by expressing your desire to have of the company invest back in your in you in a, appreciation appreciation okay. okay what did you get from this one uh, writing a letter to request the Is that we have the result that that training to goals that the company um, has set and yeah. so it's important to okay to assist you to that, that point yeah. perfect so that is, yeah, it's a good idea to highlight your force. I mean, I have done this for the company. I've been in the company for this amount of years. I have improved this one. And I know that if I get these skills and this uh, training, I will do a lot of things for the company. So maybe something like that. What is willingness, everybody? Yeah. 
in your disposition. Okay, when you are able and you want to do something, right? When you really want to do something. I don't think there are many other. Express gratitude. That is going to be for, let me check. Disposition. Okay. That is going to be for Ramon. Could you please help us express gratitude? Hello, Ramon. Okay, no problem. So, uh, Fernando, could you please help us reading this? Express gratitude. Yep. Show your appreciation. Show your appreciation for the willingness of your um, your employer to review and consider your request. In this section, you can explain how you can benefit the team as well. Example of this type of expression include, I appreciate your consideration of my request and I look forward to hearing and thank you for considering this request. And committed to this company and would like to further my goals of the business. Okay, very well, perfect. So what did you get from this one? Uh, you, in the life you need to be, uh, you need to express I don't know if it's my internet connection or yours, but I cannot hear anything. Uh, okay, you know? Uh, I can hear you now, yeah. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. Sorry, my, my, uh, my, my headphones are <laughs> Oh, don't worry about a, a problem. Uh, I say that uh, you need to express gratitude in all things that you do, especially when you when you ask for for an opportunity. So, but it's not only express gratitude; it's um, a for to show that uh, and the way that this this opportunity can help both parts uh, because both you and the company take advantage of this. You got new skill and the company got a more specialized workforce. Perfect, very good. Actually, that is exactly what it's. So you can see there that there are, there were many things. So here, this is an example of, of a training requests. For example, dear Mrs. Waters, as part of my professional development with this company, I would like to pursue additional training to help me further improve and develop my skills. I have noticed that in our marketing department, we seem to have a gap when it comes to generating and handling incoming leads for a product. To fill that gap, I am requesting that the company cover the costs associated with training that will allow me to learn how to generate more leads and process them in a timely and efficient manner. I have researched uh, several training options and found several that I think will offer most benefit to the company and our, and our department. Actually, this part is not good because you cannot use several twice in the same idea. So this is not good anyways. And then it says, well, there are like three different options for the training. The, house, uh, the HubSpot lead generation courses. HubSpot offers 45 courses focused on lead generation and management. All of these courses are provided online and can be taken at any time. Some of these courses also provide certifications for certain skills. The cost for access to the full training library is $500. 
demand metric lead generation. Demand metric offers six video-based training courses that will help me learn how to develop a comprehensive plan for lead generation. The cost for access to the full training library is $1,000. E-consultancy masterclass in lead generation training. This is a this is a two day in-person workshop focused in the ins and outs of how digital marketing can help generate leads, engage prospects, grow opportunities and retain customers. The cost for the conference is 1,600 plus travel expenses. And then it says, I feel the in-person workshop could or would be the most beneficial to me in my goals, although the demand metric lead generation problem will be my second choice. After reviewing each, uh, each option, I found that the HubSpot lead generation course library doesn't include as much information about developing a strong action plan and implementing the concepts into my own responsibilities and tasks. The agenda for the in-person training includes detailed action plan samples and how to use them to implement a lead generation strategy in any industry. I am committed to continuing in my current position while undergoing this additional training and do not foresee the need to alter my schedule in any way. I am also committed to applying these skills in a way that will benefit the company in the years to come. By providing this opportunity for training, I believe the company will see an increase in lead generation, will, which will help in, uh, produce additional revenue and generate more awareness about our product. If you have any alternative training programs or courses you would recommend that will help me gain the knowledge and skills I'm seeking. And I am interested to hear about this. I appreciate your consideration of my request for training. If you'd like, we can schedule a follow-up meeting next Wednesday to review my request and answer any questions you might have. I look up to you as a mentor and appreciate your time in reviewing this letter sincerely. Daniel, please note that none of the companies mentioned in this article are affiliated with Indeed. So as you can see, it's a very good letter. The only thing that I didn't like is that part I was telling you, several twice in the same paragraph, not a good idea. But the rest is very nice. Presents options, presents why it's important, and then uh, that you are committed to continue in the company or in the same department and it's going to be beneficial for the company. Any comments or questions about this? At the end, it's flowering to the boss. I'm looking at you as a mentor. My God. Yeah, that is not good, right? I, I don't like that part. It's... Oh, no, I think it's like kind of a strategy to get a, 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 a yes answer. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, in English, it's very common. I mean, maybe here, uh, we believe that it's, it's not a good thing, but in English, it's very, very common to say, well, I really appreciate your knowledge and everything that you have done for me or whatever. Okay. Good, any other comments or opinions? Okay, I know that you want to go to bed. So we're gonna finish the class, definitely. So of course, we're gonna check the attendance before we finish. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia Thank you. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani, good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Good. Uh, Present teacher. Good. Uh, Francisco, for you is the 101 today. I'm sorry to tell you right now. Uh, the next one is Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanes. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. 
Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Very good. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good rest. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Thank you very much. Teacher. See you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Hello, Francisco. How are you? Good teacher. Fine teacher. Uh, very nice. Very well. So this is the one on one, and well, the first question that I want to ask you is, uh, how do you feel that you are moving on? Do you feel that you are learning? That you are checking some new things here? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, I I feel uh, I thought uh, I improve my listening. But uh, the part uh, of uh, difficult for me is the uh, speaking. Uh, because uh, I, uh, I think uh, I understand um, around uh, 85% for the listener. But uh, at the moment when I uh, Speaking, uh, I I have problem. <laughs> Something. Okay. Yeah. You know that is kind of normal, but of course here in this in this module we're going to try to speak a little bit more. Uh, I know that by now we're moving with the book, but uh, sometimes we're going to do some discussions, some uh, practice. So we're going to check into that. And uh, do you have any question about any topic or anything that we have checked? For this one, uh, no, uh, 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 maybe uh, we can uh, look at uh, some tips for uh, improve my 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 speech. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. I mean. The first thing is to practice. I mean, whenever in the class uh, I ask, what is your opinion? What do you think about that? Go for it, speak. Uh, it doesn't matter if you, uh, you do some mistakes, not a problem. So it's very important that whenever you have the chance, you can try to speak. The other thing that you can do is, is this, uh, that works very well. Think in English. I mean, when you are at home, if you are going to cook or if you are going to clean, if you are going to watch TV, everything that you do, think in English. If you don't know how to say something, if a word is something that you don't know, you can go and look in a dictionary, not in the translator, in the dictionary. And, or if there are many words, you can just make a list. Whenever you have the chance, look for that list and then you will be able to, to do it. So. That is very important. If you start thinking in English, uh, whenever you speak, it's going to be better. Because remember that the speaking comes from the mind. So if you, in your mind, are able to get everything together, everything is going to be very easy. So think in English. If you can do it all the time, all the time, think in English, and you will see that you are going to see the gaps, what the vocabulary, or if you don't know how to structure something, go and look for that information so you can then uh, do, do that in the right, in the right way. Okay, teacher, thank you. Uh, uh, something uh, happened when uh, I say uh, something. 
after that, uh, when I, uh, I uh, took off, uh, I uh, uh, thinking the, the other better uh, way to say that. <laughs> Something it happened that. Yeah, that is as I was telling you, it's kind of normal, but you need to to jump. You need to change that one. And whenever you do that, it's going to be more fluent. So you, you can do that one, of course. Okay, good Perfect. So it was a pleasure to be with you tonight and I hope you have a very good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye, teacher.